Welcome back to another episode of Lexify, the Place for Fashion podcast. I am your host, Lexi Silverstein. Today we have a fellow FITM student and a designer on with us today. Welcome, Cameron McGregor. <laughs> How are you doing today, Cameron? I am amazing. I feel amazing. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. So for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, so my name is Cameron, uh, short into Cam. Um, I am 25. I just transferred to FITM last year. Before I came to FITM, I was a communications major. Oh, wow. Being in Sacramento, going to Sac State. And um, I actually just switched to fashion design. Literally last, literally, it's been two and a half years now. So it's like a very abrupt change. And I like just dived into fashion. And now I'm like in LA, going to FITM, fashion design student in the menswear program. That is amazing. What made you want to make the switch? So it's actually a really funny story. Um, I was on Tinder and I matched this girl and then uh-huh. a week for a week, she just bothered me. She was like, you know, you dress like really nice. I think you would like fashion school. Just nonstop saying something like that for like a week. So I was just like, okay, okay. And then um, Sac State had a fashion program that I didn't know about. So I, I was like, I'm like basically finished with Sac State. I have to go back for two more classes, but like it was too late to switch my major, but I took a fashion class. It was a merchandising of the fashion industry course. And mm-hmm. I just, like first day in there, I just like loved it. I was like, dang, this is where I need to be the rest of my life. So literally that day I decided, I was like, I'm gonna look at fashion schools. I was like between FITM, Otis, and then like um, SCAD. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I called FITM, like the SF campus. I called them and I was like, hey, um, I'm like, I'm very new to fashion, but like, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And Fitum has like worked with me ever since. Oh, did you ever end up uh, going on a Tinder date with that girl? Oh, um, you know, it's funny. I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember because, like, I would like to say we're still friends. I feel like we should be friends, but I genuinely, I genuinely Yeah, <laughs> this girl like encouraged you to go to fashion school and you're like, I don't, I don't, know. Right, I don't like, really I'm know like, where she is. Right, I feel like I should... I feel like she had like such like a big deal on my life now. Like, I didn't know if I cannot remember to save my life. I my life. <laughs> That's so funny. So how has been like the switch from you said Sacramento mm-hmm. to like LA? Has it been different or like pretty much the same? Um, honestly, it feels the same. Like I feel like I can live anywhere. I think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very outgoing. I'm very. I like to be out of the house. I like to meet people. So everywhere feels kind of the same. Like I went to Portland last year. It feels the same as LA. Mm-hmm. I went to new york in june it felt the same as la to me i think everywhere everywhere just kind of feels the same i just like to meet new people and kind of talk and just spread my wings yeah definitely i like i every time i go to like a big city or something i'm like i feel like it either looks like la or it looks like new york which like then they both la and new york look the same but it's always like i don't know like i classify when i see places as like oh yeah like this is a big city but i would categorize it as like it looks more like la And then I don't know why, like, it's just in my brain, like, that's how it works. But, like, I feel like all, like, big cities just, like, look the same. So it's, like, eh, what's the big difference? No, like, they, they, like, do it. I think, like, once you've seen one tall building, Building. like, (laughs) at some point, they all just kind of look the same. Yeah, literally. So why did you end up choosing, like, FITM over both SCAD and the other college that you mentioned? Uh, So the reason I chose FITM was because of the professional designation pro program mm-hmm. I'm like wow like it's not a good thing I like harp on age a lot and I'm like I have like a very I have like a tight time timeline of things I want to accomplish by certain ages mm-hmm. but like I know like I love school and like I want to be in school but at the end of the day like I'm 25 I need to start getting into you know the road mm-hmm. and bills and stuff so FITM was like the place where it felt like it was the easiest tra- transition where I mm-hmm. could do things very quickly and still learn a lot like the other like the like different schools I would have been there for probably like two three years and I don't I didn't want to commit that much time like yeah yeah I looked into SCAD too I like even went there for like a summer once and I like spent a week there and like took classes and then I was like I feel like if I'm gonna choose the more like stereo or the the non-stereotypical like non-traditional fashion school I should at least like go to like LA or New York like why would I go to Savannah Georgia um so that was my decision as to why did that choose SCAD um but SCAD was very pretty I just like love LA are you from Los Angeles 
I am not. Um, I am originally from Washington, D.C. Well, like, not really. I'm from right outside of Washington, D.C., but it's just easier to say Washington, D.C. I would not have. So I would have to tell you this. If I had to guess, I would have thought you were from Texas. <laughs> I would have guessed you. Were Why? From, take that as you will. I don't mean it like a bad way. I don't know. You sound like a very, like, like maybe it's because I've seen a bunch of outfits and, like, boots maybe i don't know <laughs> it's because i'm always wearing those freaking cowboy boots that's, that's why, why. But <laughs> i just assumed that you were from there <laughs> no oh my god that is so funny i've never been to texas and i'm not planning on it anytime soon but you know they have some nice parts they have some nice parts of texas i guess well dallas is nice yeah i i if i were to rank like what states i'm planning on going to like <laughs> Don't think Texas is like even top 25, but <laughs> maybe at some point, maybe at some point. But yeah, that's so funny. I've never gotten like, I don't, I don't think I've ever like actually had a conversation with someone where like they've told me I like seem like I'm from a certain place. So that's interesting. But yeah, DC, kind of East Coast, born and raised. Um, anyways, so before you were like on the more traditional path of like college would you say yeah extremely traditional yeah so how has that like transition been like do you do you really enjoy like the more like fashion path of things and I know a lot of my listeners are like um people that are fashion lovers and maybe are looking to go into like studying fashion in college what would you suggest like maybe trying the traditional path and then doing what you did and like transferring to the fashion path or just like originally going to the fashion path or like what what do you think the best like advice you could give to like college students would be i think um so a little background so how like i started off in the school so out of high school i was an athlete and i played football and i like my like freshman year i moved to utah for a year and i played football there and then i ended up transferring like to different oh, really places. Yeah, so I was like a whole, I was, I was like a whole like like college athlete. So the reason I'm saying that is that like I kind of wish that I would have known from like the jump that like I wanted to like do fashion design and came to fit him as like a 18, like an 18 year old, 18 year old out of high school. But also, I mean, just speaking for myself, I wouldn't have been like I feel like everything that you go through kind of like mm-hmm. you like I wouldn't have been a good designer. I don't think had I started like younger Mm. it's kind of like I think if like as long as you're passionate about fashion I don't think I don't think like going straight into it is the most important thing Mm -hmm. just be willing to try new things and don't be like afraid to don't be afraid to fail is like the main thing yeah yeah like I wouldn't recommend the traditional route if, if like you really are against it but I think there's like things in traditional school that you learn different from Fitum that mm-hmm. I appreciated. Yeah. And I definitely think, I mean, like we, I feel like it's like grained into our brains that like we're all supposed to know what we want to do for the rest of our lives at like the age that we go to college. But like, I know people that have literally changed their entire lives at like the age of 50 and the age of whatever. And, um, like, how are we supposed to know the path that we're going to go on when we're, when our brains aren't even fully developed? Exactly. Um, like, we're not. So, like you said, like, like, the things that we go through in life, like, I always look back and I'm like, I can't believe, like, I did that shit when I was in high school. Like, I don't regret a minute of it because I feel like it literally, like, made me the person I am today, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, (laughs) But, like, all the, all the things that we go through in life, I mean, like, it's life, like, it's how it, it, like, builds us to be the people that we are today. So, I agree that, like, you know, we're not, it, we're not supposed to know you know like we're not supposed to know everything and we can change our lives as many times as we want to um th- throughout the entirety of our life so, <laughs> yeah so that's super interesting that's so wow you really did like a whole 180 you were a college athlete and then you went to a school that doesn't even have sports <laughs> yeah it was it's been a weird like i and like in like between that time, like I've really I've been a student at probably like seven different 
uh, like schools. Mm -hmm. like, I like bounce around a lot. And I think like, that's one of like the like the beautiful things of like where I'm at now is that like is that like I've like I've like seen like every different path. So now like once you get here, like you know that this is what you yeah. want. Like it kind of it it just it reinforces that like you have been willing to like work hard and that you have put in like the time that it takes to kind of find like yourself. So your major now, do you can you repeat it just for the listeners? Yeah. So um I finished my AA for fashion design and now mm -hmm. I have the advanced program for uh, menswear. Okay, awesome. And so do you like really enjoy that, like what you're doing? Um, yeah, I like so here's like the, the <laughs> really honest part. So when I came to fit them, like my goal was, I was like, I want to finish this first year. I want to go into the day of BU mm -hmm. pro uh, gram. And then once I, once like that is through at, at like that fashion show, I'm just going to kill it. And like, from that, I'm just going to springboard into like this just amazing career. Right. And I like applied what in like March and like looking back at it, I shouldn't have gotten into it. Like I wasn't re ready. Like my work was not good enough. Like being like not too harsh on myself, but like I wasn't at a, a place where like it, it was time for like that. Mm -hmm. So like that was hard in itself, but falling into the menswear program, like for one, I appreciate that like they want me in there. It feels like it feels good to be wanted in like mm -hmm. space. But I think like being a hundred percent honest, I think the way I design is probably a better fit for the fashion design, uh -huh. the advanced one. But I love the menswear program. Like I love all my classmates in there and like the professors we learn from. So I really have no complaints. Like I'm happy. Like I think um, I've like learned to take no well and like, <laughs> bounce back and find different ways to go, go uh, through it. So yeah, I feel like short, I love the menswear bro. <laughs> <laughs> long story short. Yeah, I feel like especially in like the fashion industry, like we're gonna have to get used to say like hearing no, <laughs> like all of the freaking time. So it's good that you're a little prepared already for that because I just know that the fashion industry is like so competitive and all that. So yeah, it's it's good that you're prepared a little, at least a little bit already before you know graduation and everything. Um so that's awesome. So what like classes do you take? Because I always feel like that's like the most interesting thing when I talk about like FITM and I'm like, yeah, like my math class is like retail math and like my history class is like 20th century designers. Like everyone just finds it fascinating, but I, I don't know, like the men's, I'm not, a, I'm not in a design major at all. I'm in a business uh, major. So like what kind of classes do you take? And then in those classes, like what exactly do you have to like do? So um, the class I like most out of the program so far, we have um, our like apparel process class. Mm -hmm. That's basically just like a pattern drafting class. It's mm -hmm. like, like go in there, we get to work in like, we get to work with like all like the real equipment and stuff. We get mm -hmm. like tables and all that. And basically we just like draft patterns. We like sew in like mm -hmm. the sewing labs, which is like the part of fashion I like most because it is like the actual just like sewing and like pattern drafting, like creating. Right. But, uh, other than that, we are in a we're in a merchandising class. So for this quarter, we have, we have like gone through like just different markets and brands, and basically like we like take like a brand, we like create like uh we like create like basically like their like next line. So we like mm. release like ten like pieces for like their like next line, and then we like look how like that brand would like use these. They would they would sell these, and how like that would work basically. Um, we are in like a design class where it's just like computer stuff. So we're like making patterns, like designing, just like in like CADs and stuff. Um, what, what else am I in? We are in a textiles class, which is mm. my least, which, well, it's turning into like a, a like a thing that I kind of like, but it's like the hardest probably course of fashion school to me. It's textiles yeah. and just like burn, burn test. Definitely not my, yeah. my strong suit. I did, I did a textiles class. Um, my first quarter I'm not really sure why because again I'm not in the design major but I guess like I have to know about like textiles and stuff but um I remember taking the burn test and the questions were like how does it smell what color is the smoke and I'm like uh like everything you smell the same to me I'm like why do I have to why do I have to do this like why do I have to actually know like how a type of fabric burns like I don't think I'm gonna really be setting 
fabric on fire in my day to day, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know what the fashion industry has in store for me, but that's so cool. Like the, even the, like hearing the difference between like my, I thought my classes were cool, but (laughs) like listening to yours and like, like yours are also more like obviously hands-on like I do a lot of computer stuff because I'm marketing major but like the design and the pattern making like I love sewing um but I like never actually learned like how to really sew like I just make clothes for myself and I'm like "Eh, if the seam's a little fucked up do I really care it's like I'm gonna be wearing it so like no um but it's so just like interesting hearing like all of the classes that like even the design major takes and then also just how many steps like goes into designing clothes and like making clothes because I feel like people I mean just in general like I feel like people have this like like there's like a stigma around like the fashion industry and like we're all dumb or we're all whatever and it's easy to do all this stuff but it's actually like there's so much that goes into like every little thing um I always say this but I quote I don't know if you've ever seen Devil Wears Prada um the Devil Wears Prada with like Meryl Streep um but there's like this iconic line where she has two different belts and they're two different colors but they're like both blue and her assistant like laughs because they're like oh my god the belts are so different but like to the assistant they look the same and then Meryl Streep just pops off (laughs) and she's like actually like that color blue was like from this show and these people had to make it and this much money went into it. And I was like, yes, like, thank you, Meryl Streep. (laughs) So that's what I always quote when people like make fun of the fashion industry. I'm like, actually, um, I don't know if you know this, but that had to happen and to this, have this happen. And then this had to happen and that had to happen. So actually, anyways, but I just think it's so interesting, like the design major and just everything. And like, you guys are all so talented, like so much like creds to anyone who's in the design major because it's a lot of freaking hard work and you guys are all like creative and hard workers. And it's just like amazing to see. I like, uh, I tell, I tell like all my like friends, I'd be like, the biggest shock is that like, I do a lot of math. Like when I'm like, <laughs> like if like, you look at mine, like you just see math just kind yeah. of written down, like, just non, just non-stop, because, like, the, like, problems can really be, like, you could have, like, messed something up just, like, one eighth or, like, a sixteenth, and, like, it, it just distorts, like, how it's supposed to fit, like, there's just, it's such minor things you have to fix to make things fit right, mm-hmm. and, like, it just takes me so, I'm, I, like, a lot of math, there's a lot of math involved in it that I did not know about it. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. No, that was like the thing with, I was like, oh, like, I want to be a buyer. And I used to, when I was like younger, I was like, oh, like, I just have to go around and like travel and like shop for brands. Like, how easy is that? And then I met like a bunch of the buyer teachers, like Mimi Sue um, is one of my teachers. And she was like a buyer for like Dior and like all these other places. And she was like, yeah, like math is like the biggest thing I use. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's a good thing hard. it's a good thing that was my best subject because I was like I really was like eh, I'm never gonna have to use this shit that I learned in high school and then it's like actually just kidding I actually will but <laughs> moving on so how did you like in the first place just like overall get into fashion um so I've always been so ever since I was young I've like always been in the arts like when I was when I was like eight years old I used to write songs I wanted to be a singer when I was like uh, 10, I got into drawing. I used to draw c- comic books for like my school paper. When I was in high school, I was in like, um, like like me, like in my best friend who I live with now actually, uh, we used to film skits and stuff for like our school daily news thing. So like I've always been in the arts and like I've always, I've always surprised, like I've always wanted to have a fashion brand. I just, I didn't know I didn't know like it would be me actually like I didn't know I, I would ever get to like the sewing and like the actual mm-hmm. construction part. I was more so just like a I, I like like I like to like draw draw designs and press them on t-shirts so I've always been into art but um I have like this very like artistic view of like what fashion is to me where mm-hmm. um, so like I've tried every every type of art for like the most part and um like, I look at fashion the same way, like, I think, like, a singer looks at, like, music and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where I'm, like, like, you kind of look for, like, the art style that is, like, the best to kind of convey, like, what you want to say. And I feel like fashion, like, gives me, like, that platform to kind of speak my, like, mind and like that. So, 
it's not surprising that I've, I've ended in fashion because I've, I've like always been into it. like I've always been in like just so like wearing, wearing nicer clothes and wearing things mm-hmm. like that but um but yeah I just I think like once I really understood like the art of it and like really just like learn to appreciate like the smaller things that make it I think that's when like it really blossomed I was like this mm-hmm. is like where I belong yeah yeah I feel like that's always like when I talk to fashion-based people I feel like there's always just like such a love like for forever like for as long as they can remember for just fashion and clothing and I always say this and my podcast listeners are going to be like Lexi shut the fuck up because I literally think I say it in every podcast but like fashion is so much more than just the clothing you put on your body like it's a means of self-expression it's a means of telling other people like how you're feeling that day how you're feeling in that hour like who you want to be who like you want to show the world that you want to be and then it's also like it's a psychology it's a science there's literally like studies that if you enjoy your outfit if you wear certain colors like your day will be better Um, so it's like a full fucking science. Like there is so much more to fashion than just like, oh my God, like I'm going to put this shirt on and these pants on. Like you put those shirt, that shirt on and you put these pants on and it tells the whole world who you are. And, um, I had this argument with my boyfriend because he's a pre-med major and wants to be a doctor. And like, obviously, yes, everyone needs a doctor, but on a day-to-day basis, you put clothes on your body and there is a whole industry, and I'm not saying that us fashion people are more important than the doctors in the world, but on a day-to-day basis, you put clothing on your body. That means that our tiny little fashion industry of however many people impacts your day-to-day life on like literally like what you wear to sleep. You wear clothes constantly I mean maybe some people don't I'm I I don't know to each their own but like most people (laughs) wear clothes on a day-to-day basis so basically you and I are the most important people in the world (laughs) is my summary that is one hell of an argument argument. I'm not gonna openly I'm not gonna just say I believe what you're saying but when you (laughs) phrase it like that it does make a lot of sense I mean yeah again I'm joking like obviously like I mean, part of every, <laughs> like, obviously every profession is important. We need our doctors. We need like our, everything, like they're all of the professions, no, like all jokes aside, like everyone is amazing. And everyone that like puts in work to uh, like benefit people on a day-to-day basis are amazing. And, um, but <laughs> when you think about it, like we, you literally constantly are wearing clothes. I mean, unless you're like obviously in the shower or unless you just don't feel like wearing clothes, um, which is cool. But <laughs> most people on a day-to-day basis wear clothes. They wear clothes to sleep and they're constantly wearing clothes. Um, so it's like so funny how so many people think that they're like exempt from the fashion industry because they're like, oh, like I don't care what I wear. Or, like, I'm not into like this style or this trend or whatever, but it's like, okay, but you're still putting clothes on your body. So you're still a part of it. Anyways, it's just interesting. (laughs) So how did you first, now that you, we know how you got into fashion, how did you first really get into like design? Like, did you already, when did you learn how to sew and did you already know how to sew by the time you got to fit them or did fit them teach you like everything, you know, um, and just tell us how you got into like the design aspect of things. So um, about two years ago, I like decided I was like, I'm going to be a fashion designer. Like, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. So my birthday came up like a month after that day. I bought a sewing machine that day. And I was like, I'm going to learn to sew. So I got the sewing machine like a week after. Um, first day I got it, I tried to sew and I was so bad at it. Like, I, and, like <laughs> I'm very, like, I'm like, I mean, like, I don't want to say like I'm good at, good at everything because that's not true. But like, I pick things up quick, mm-hmm. quickly. So when like, I don't pick stuff up, quickly it's like hard to keep keep going like I, mm. I, like, I like 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 when you're bad son it's hard to keep going so I didn't touch my sewing machine for like six seven months months after that but um I took a sewing class at a JC uh in Sacramento actually and then mm. um I took that class and that was kind of where I learned like the basics of sewing and then after that I just like would go home I would just like work on it basically and then I started doing a bunch of commissions this is actually the first shirt I ever made this is like my first design that I drew and everything oh my god really I was literally gonna say before the podcast started that I was like oh my god I'm obsessed with your shirt oh I'm, <laughs> I think lace should be more of a menswear thing yeah it's so sick but um so then um 
I just I just tried to self teach teach myself. And the one thing I will say about Fit'em that they do kind of lie about. They do kind of lie about. It's like they tell you like you like don't need to know how like so and like you first start like we teach you everything. But if you don't have any experience sewing like your first quarter, like you're gonna have a hard time. Mm. Um, like the sewing class is good and it teaches you a lot, but like there needs to be more sewing classes like this shouldn't just just be one industry sewing and then they could because like like they give you the one and then you're kind of out there like 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 the dry unless you're very like self-motivated and you like practice non-stop mm -hmm. like, it's a very hard thing to get good at like i've been sort of probably like like consistently and like getting better at it for a year and a half and i'm still like very far off of like the quality that mm -hmm. i want to be at but um but yeah so for the most part like if somebody asked i say majority of the time like i self-taught myself like missy Mm -hmm. mostly like just looking on you uh two videos but i think it's always good to kind of have like a, a class and just like learn from somebody like face like the face where they can actually show you the the different stitches and everything yeah definitely that would definitely be helpful for me because i like oh my god i always get so motivated to sew something um i have like three unfinished projects underneath my bed in storage um that like I was like yeah I'm gonna sew this and then I'm gonna have it done by like the winter time so I can wear it and it's gonna be cute and then that was last year and it's still not finished it's so to, like, get back to yeah I just like I, I love it and I think it's like honestly therapeutic but I always fuck up like because I never actually took a class on like measurements and like making um patterns and like stuff like that or even how do you like use a pattern if you go on like Etsy and buy someone else's but um so like I was taught how to sew from like my grandma and my mom but I was never like I never taught like pattern work and like whatever so mostly it's just like I look at something and I like kind of like <laughs> makeshift it together and it might work or it might not, <laughs> and then I wasted a lot of fabric, and now I have to use that fabric to make something else, but I definitely think it would have been helpful for me to <laughs> take some sort of class being like, you have to use a certain needle so that your needle doesn't break 18 billion times when you're using I a certain broke, fabric. I broke so many needles when I first started. I, broke I like so <laughs> all the time. I do it. Oh my god. I literally, and for some reason, I just like, sewing machines hate me, and um, during COVID, I was making a lot, I was sewing like a lot of, or like upcycling a lot of things. Um, and I, oh God, I like, I had this sewing machine or my mom had the sewing machine for like, as long as I can remember. Like, I, I think it's literally been the sewing machine that I've used and that my mom have used like since I've been alive. And of course, like during quarantine, I like use it a few times and it breaks. And I was like, bro, like, why? Like, why the second I touch it? And I was like, okay, it's just like one thing. Like, I just messed it up. Like, it's fine. And then we got like a family friend's sewing machine that she wasn't using anymore. And then fabric got stuck in it. And then it broke again. And I was like, are you kidding me? Um, and then we got a new one. I, I don't remember when, <laughs> but we got a new one pretty recently. And like we were using it and like I was literally doing like the first few stitches and the stitches were so messed up and I was like, what is going on? Like why do all of the sewing machines, why are they all ganging up and having their little conversations and being like, let's make Lexi's projects a disaster. And then every time I touch a sewing machine, it goes wrong. So I need to learn how to use a sewing machine again because these shits hate me. They hate me. I'm pointing because there's a sewing machine on my desk right now and it's it's staring at me and we're beefing. Um, anyways, <laughs> but again, it is really hard to sew your own clothes. So I have so much respect for you and for any other designers that are able to just like make clothing because it's such a flex. Like it's so cool that you guys are able to do that. And then that can be like your career. Like that's so I, it's, it's cool. awesome. Yeah, I'm it like is so cool. So much respect. Well, what is your favorite thing that you have like ever made? Um, that is a hard question. <laughs> um, or favorite few things. <laughs> probably like everything I make, like in a weird way, like it has like a very mm -hmm. sentimental place to to me. I think just because like I I remember like the time that I made it. And, like this is probably like the first thing where it's like, hold up. Can, can I stand up? Do you mind yes. Oh my God. Show but, us. Yeah, Give us a fashion show. So it's like. Oh my God. It's, it's really not the best. Like if you look at like. No, show, the lace cutout is so sick. I want like a little lace cutout hard. I have like lace sleeves. 
and like I drew this like I was like at my job and like I just I was like um I want to start to like draw and just like design things so this is like the first sketch I, I like ever made that like I brought to like life so I, I was just this is something like I was just extremely proud of so, Aww. Like, I'll probably forever have this like I plan to honestly I want to get it just like framed like I'm like big into having just like things like framed in front of me. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of my drawings I like, get framed like his prints hang up so this will probably get a get, good get frame, but like one day when I'm like, you know, like a bigger designer, like I'm, I can always like look back and this is like the beginning. I'm very, I'm a sentimental person. Yeah, <laughs> I would be too if I knew how to sew like you did. So I just keep like all like the, like the small projects. Um, Probably the first, the proudest I've been was like last quarter, I had collection development for fashion um, design. I had Olivia Montahano. So if anybody listening to this has her, she's like my, like, I just, I love her. She's, like, like amazing professor. She's so sweet. She, like, will help you. She, like, challenges you to really explore just, like, how I how design everything. Oh. And my, like, collection for that class, I was, like, really proud of. It was the first time that I've ever had to make, like, a cohesive, cohesive collection. And, like, it was just something, like, proud of, like, you can, like, tell, like, a full story just from, like, two outfits. Like, you can just tell, tell a full story. Mm-hmm. Like, overall, it was, like, nine different pieces, but it was just, it was, like, a challenge to get everything done. A really big challenge to get everything done. But, like, once everything was done, it's just, like, the proudest feeling. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's amazing. That's so cool. So, do you ever, like, I'm a huge sustainable person, and I mentioned during quarantine, like, I, I upcycled a lot. Is that something that, like, you're interested in? Do you ever, like, go thrifting and upcycle things and um, just in general, like, care about, like, the kind of sustainability aspect of FITM because, of fashion, because I know in FITM, um, we, like, learn about that on, like, a day-to-day basis, at least in my major we do. So, like, I just wanted to know if that's something that interests you. Yeah. Um, so honestly, I'd like thrift 95% of my clothes. Like probably <laughs> I, I've got it from a thrift store. Just half part, I'm I'm cheap when it comes to clothes. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't think like, I don't think the price of clothes, well, I'm starting to flip on that. I see now, like now that I'm in fashion design, like I get why there's, I mm-hmm. get why things why are expensive. Are, I, yeah, I get why things are expensive, but I don't think you need to buy design or clothes to like dress nice so I thrift majority of my clothes or get like finished stuff I actually that's a whole different story I'll get into it in a sec but um so I like especially like as I learned to sew like I didn't like to buy materials and well I to be honest I was like terrified to go into a store to buy some fabric like it's just mm-hmm. it's a very over it's just it's, it's a big experience like you want mm-hmm. piles and piles of fabric yeah I yeah I didn't know like the measurements how to ask mm-hmm. so, starting off probably like the first six months of me beginning to sew like I I only upcycle pieces so like uh, a lot of the time like I'll just I'll get different things I'll cut them up and then kind of like re devise them or like old clothes like I really don't like to like throw away just like really old like clothes like I really wish my dad and like my brother from like back when they were like young like they kept like a lot of their stuff mm-hmm. just, like, stuff that I could just wear now so upcycling is definitely big. And then sustainability, I think, is, I think it's probably, I think it's the most important thing in fashion right now. Like, I think, yeah. so my whole issue with sustainability, though, is that I think right now, and I get, like, why it's so expensive, but it's, like, it's really, it's, like, a luxury of, like, you have to have a certain amount of money to buy sustainable. Yeah. So I think, like, a piece of me is, like, I just, like there needs to be a way to make sustainable clothing possible for like the average person to afford. Yeah. Well, I think that when you think about like sustainable fashion, um, like when I kind of like think like, oh, like I want this top and it's sustainable and it's made out of this fabric and like these, I know that it was like made ethically and whatever. Um, like I just have that mindset when like kind of going into it, if I'm buying like from a like literal sustainable brand and I know that like that piece I'm probably going to have for like the rest of my life. Like it's a, it's something that I am maybe spending more money on than I would on like the average thing. But at least I'm, I know that in like my mind, I'm spending money on quality. Um, and I guess I, I know like with how fast the fashion industry is, um, and like fast fashion, everyone wants more things constantly. Um, 
And that's why I always just suggest like thrifting if you want to be sustainable. And then you also like are a broke college student like me. Um, <laughs> like I think that thrifting is such an easy way of being sustainable. And like you said, like 95% of your closet is thrifted. Like 95% of my closet is thrifted too. And I just love thrifting. Like I think it's so fun. Like it's like, it's like literally today I was stressed and I was like, oh, I have so much homework and like whatever. And I was like, even though I have so much homework, I could totally like spend an hour at a thrift store today and just like relieve some of that stress because I just love the process of thrifting. Like it just is so fun for me. Um, but yeah, I think that thrifting is just an easy way of being sustainable while also being cheap um, for all of our broke college students like me that are listening, um, thrifting. That is always my number one tip if you want to be sustainable. But yeah, I love that you upcycle things. I just, I also think like it's a great, upcycling is a great way of like, if you are a starter designer kind of, and you want to like learn how to sew and you want to make garments, it's kind of, I almost feel like easier to do so when you're upcycling because most likely like that top already has some of the seams that like you would have to do or it's already like cut a certain way or whatever and so honestly I I like that's how I learned to like really like make clothing is by upcycling because I would take things that were kind of already made and then just essentially make them into something else so if you are also a beginner um, designer and you're listening maybe try upcycling because and like going thrifting and buying something and then making it into something else because honestly I feel like I did that and it was a really easy way of like learning how to do stuff even though I still suck so I wouldn't like I don't <laughs> I don't know if I take the most designer tips from me definitely take them from Cameron but um that's just my one tip about designing <laughs> my one um so how overall do you think that you would describe like your style so wait, do you mean like design style or like personal style? Well, both. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's my personal style. Well, actually, I think they're the same. So I pride myself on just being like I don't like ever being like labeled in a box and like mm-hmm. to, just to wear anything I want, and like design anything I want, and just like I'm very just big into like pushing like the box open and just like, mm-hmm. finding different ways to kind of just be out there. So um. When people ask, like, I hate answering this question. We're like, they're like, uh, <laughs> that's you know, why like, I ask it. Everyone always says that they hate yeah. answering it. <laughs> so, the way I describe it, I would say, like, I make high fashion menswear, but I really, I wouldn't even like, like, that's my answer when I'm like pressed to it. But like, I really feel like I can design anything. Like, I want to get to the point where I can like do collabs of like IKEA. Well, I mean, not like IKEA, but like, I want to make like furniture. I want to make oh, yeah. shoes. I want to do everything. So, very just. Like, I hate this question. It's such a hard question to answer because, like, I don't feel like I don't belong in, like, a... Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not, like, a couture person. Like, I'm not to that level, but I'm not at a fast fashion level. Like, I'm very much in in between. Yeah, got it. Got it. I agree, like, with the whole not putting yourself in one category. And I think that's another great thing about fashion is you don't have to. One day, you could be goth, and the next day, you could be cottagecore. Like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> no one's going to tell you you can't. So do it. Um, so if you were to like choose a brand that you could design for, what would be like your dream collaboration with a brand? So my dream job and like, I'm like very big, like I have to pick like very realistic. Like I, I need like very specific goals. So my dream job is I want to be the creative director for menswear for Lacoste okay my dream job is like like to work for like lacoste that would be amazing oh my god well it's gonna happen you put it out into the universe so now it's gonna happen and when you are doing that remember me remember me as your first podcast because this is my first podcast this is my first <laughs> because i i'm i'm gonna be like i remember you and i want um a cam times cam x lacoste collaboration merch yes words are not coming to my mouth right now but i'm excited to see it it's gonna happen and just okay in general once you graduate 
And we have the dream job. We know what the goal is. Once you graduate, like graduate, what do you think like you really want to do? So that part is like where I'm very, so the plan is I'm going to apply for jobs here, mm -hmm. in New York, in London, and wherever I get the best. Oh, job, wow. I'm gonna live too. I really want to live, live there. Like I, 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 really, I really want to live in London and in New York, really. I mean, Have you ever um, considered doing the study abroad at FEDM? Because one of my options for, I want to do it next year. And one of my options is the London College of Fashion. No, I didn't know that. Well, really, I didn't know it's the, uh, I didn't know that, that the, I, I didn't know that the study abroad thing was a thing until uh, the orientation. I was uh, like, at the desk. I was like, oh, because I didn't do like a study abroad, which I guess I should have assumed. It would make sense. I mean, yeah, it's a fashion school. I feel like they have to. <laughs> I would say if like you have the like chance, like you definitely should. Like I yeah. you get you get to different places. I think every time you like go anywhere, I think like you it just gives you a chance to find like new parts about yourself that you like wouldn't have already found. Yeah, definitely. So, if you have the chance to go, you definitely should go. Well, I am very excited to see what you do. I know you're gonna do big things and just like seeing your passion, you know, this is gonna be cliche your passion for fashion ugh, is inspiring. Um, <laughs> but I cannot wait to see what you do. Do you have anything else that you would like to mention to the listeners before we go? Um, what do I have to say? Um, my, so my, like, so my like, goal for this year is I want to, I want to get to as many followers as you, mm -hmm. that is my goal. So if everybody watching this could please leave me a follow at my Instagram account at Cam the Ripper. I would really greatly appreciate it. And also um, I am planning on raising my first full collection um, next fall. So I will be posting like updates on that just like throughout the uh, year and I'm gonna host my own runway show in downtown LA. So oh my gosh. That is amazing. Well, yeah, everyone go follow him. He mentioned that, so you better go check it out. Um, and if you, you want to stay updated with everything he's going to do, well, social media is the best way to do that. So definitely go check him out. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my socials, my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube are all at Lexi Silverstein. That's L-E-X-Y, silver like the color, S-T-E-I-N. And remember to make the ordinary extraordinary.